Chapter 3 of Science of Being Well. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jill Preston. Science of Being Well by Wallace D. Waddles. Chapter 3 Life and Its Organisms. The human body is the abiding place of an energy which renews it when worn, which eliminates waste or poisonous matter, and which repairs the body when broken or injured. This energy we call life. Life is not generated or produced within the body. It produces the body. The seed which has been kept in the storehouse for years will grow when planted in the soil. It will produce a plant. But the life in the plant is not generated by its growing. It is the life which makes the plant grow. The performance of function does not cause life. It is life which causes function to be performed. Life is first, function afterward. It is life which distinguishes organic from inorganic matter but it is not produced after the organization of matter. Life is the principle or force which causes organization. It builds organisms. It is a principle or force inherent in original substance. All life is one. This life principle of the all is the principle of health in man and becomes constructively active whenever man thinks in a certain way. Whoever therefore thinks in this certain way will surely have perfect health if his external functioning is in conformity with his thought. But the external functioning must conform to the thought. Man cannot hope to be well by thinking health if he eats, drinks, breathes, and sleeps like a sick man. The universal life principle, then, is the principle of health in man. It is one with original substance. There is one original substance from which all things are made. This substance is alive, and its life is the principle of life, the universe. This substance has created from itself all the forms of organic life by thinking them, or by thinking the motions and functions which produce them. Original substance thinks only health, because it knows all truth. There is no truth which is not known in the formless, which is all, and in all. It is not only knows all truth, but it has all power. Its vital power is the source of all the energy there is. A conscious life which knows all truth, and which has all power, cannot go wrong or perform function imperfectly, knowing all it knows. Too much to go wrong, and so the formless cannot be diseased or think diseased. Man is a form of this original substance and has a separate consciousness of his own, but his consciousness is limited and therefore imperfect. By reason of his limited knowledge, man can and does think wrongly, and so he causes perverted and imperfect functioning in his own body. Man has not known too much to go wrong. The diseased or imperfect functioning may not instantly result from an imperfect thought, but it is bound to come if the thought becomes habitual. Any thought continuously held by man tends to the establishment of the corresponding condition in his body. Also, man has failed to learn how to perform the voluntary functions of his life in a healthy way. He does not know when, what, and how to eat. He knows little about breathing and less about sleep. He does all these things in a wrong way and under wrong condition and this because he has neglected to follow the only sure guide to the knowledge of life. He has tried to live by logic rather than by instinct. He has made living a matter of art and not of nature, and he has gone wrong. His only remedy is to begin to go right, and this he can surely do. It is the work of this book to teach the whole truth, so that the man who reads it shall know too much to go wrong. The thoughts of disease produce the forms of disease. Man must learn to think health and be an original substance, which takes the form of its thought. He will become the form of health and manifest perfect health and all his functioning. 
The people who were healed by touching the bones of the saint were really healed by thinking in a certain way, and not by any power emanating from the relics. There is no healing power in the bones of dead men, whether they be those of saint or sinner. The people who were healed by the doses of either the allopath or the homeopath were also really healed by thinking in a certain way. There is no drug which has within itself the power to heal disease. The people who have been healed by prayers and affirmations were also healed by thinking in a certain way. There is no curative power in strings of words. All the sick who have been healed by whatsoever system have thought in a certain way, and a little examination will show us what this way is. The two essentials of the way are faith and a personal application of the faith. The people who touched the saints' bones had faith, and so great was their faith that in the instant they touched the relics, they severed all mental relations with disease and mentally unified themselves with health. This change of mind was accompanied by an intense devotional feeling which penetrated to the deepest recesses of their souls and so aroused the principle of health to powerful action. By faith they claimed that they were healed or appropriated health to themselves, and in full faith they ceased to think of themselves in connection with disease and thought of themselves only in connection with health. These are the two essentials to thinking in the certain way which will make you well. First, claim or appropriate health by faith, and second, sever all mental relations with disease and enter into mental relations with health. That which we make ourselves mentally, we become physically. And that with which we unite ourselves mentally, we become unified with physically. If your thought always relates you to disease, then your thought becomes a fixed power to cause disease within you. And if your thought always relates you to health, then your thought becomes a fixed power exerted to keep you well. In the case of the people who are healed by medicines, the result is obtained in the same way. They have, consciously or unconsciously, sufficient faith in the means used to cause them to sever mental relations with disease and enter into mental relations with health. Faith may be unconscious. It is possible for us to have a subconscious or inbred faith in things like medicine, in which we do not believe to any extent objectively, and this subconscious faith may be quite sufficient to quicken the principle of health into constructive activity. Many who have little conscious faith are healed in this way, while many others who have great faith in the means are not healed, because they do not make the personal application to themselves. Their faith is general, but not specific for their own cases. In the science of being well, we have two main points to consider. First, how to think with faith, and second, how to so apply the thought to ourselves as to quicken the principle of health into constructive activity. We begin by learning what to think. End of chapter 3 Recording by Jill Preston